everybody. Hi. Hello, welcome to another episode on True Talk. Talk. Yay, we're excited to be here today. And I mean, it's the first day period, Yay. the first day season. <laughs> I love the Christmas season. I don't know about you I guys, do, I do. but yeah. it's so exciting. And so just before we go into the talk of today, we just want to, you know, <laughs> just, you know, Sing a little bit. I mean, we all love Christmas carols, so we're just going to sing a, bit, a little bit of, you know, Christmas songs. And please join us. Feel free, join us. So, Ella, mm -hmm. who would you say is your favorite Christmas, you know, song? Yeah, for me, a uh, favorite. I'm not sure I have one, but there's one that has just been ringing in my heart recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's this one. You guys sing along, okay? <laughs> Away in a manger, no crib for his bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. Oh. <laughs> yes, it brings so much excitement. Dara, so what's yours? <laughs> Yes, well, there are lots of songs that I love this festive season, but there is a special one that I really like, and it's Silent Night. Mm -hmm. So let's sing together. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round your virgin mother and child, holy so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Wow, that was really nice. That was so nice. So it's my turn now. So I have a lot of, you know, favorites, but I would pick my old time favorite, which is Joy to the World. Woo! <laughs> So let's just sing together. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive a king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. That was really nice. <laughs> so we hope you sang along with us and you enjoyed the Christmas songs as well. So feel free to sing yours and just, you know, enjoy the presence of God as you sing the Christmas songs. So now into the topic of today, we're going to be talking about loneliness. Loneliness. We know this is, you know, a festive period and everybody's, you know, with family and having fun and enjoying. But then there's still some people that may be in the midst of that and still feel lonely. Or some people that are just alone. They don't have anybody to reach out to. So we just want to, you know, talk a bit about that today. Mm. So let's get started with that. So what when we say loneliness, what does what does loneliness mean or signify? Okay, loneliness is, um, is a state of being or feeling alone. And you know the irony is that you don't have to physically be alone to, mm -hmm. to feel lonely because you can be in the midst of people, yes. people laughing and yeah. gesticulating and having fun and you just feel lonely. Mm -hmm. And you can also be alone physically and are feeling lonely. So yeah, just it's a state of just feeling alone or mm -hmm. being alone, mm -hmm. you know, wanting company or desiring. Yes. Company. Yes. Do you have anything to say? Yes, I agree with um, what um, Ella said. Loneliness is a state of, you know, mind because just like she has said, you don't need any environmental factor to feel lonely. Mm -hmm. You can be in the midst of so many people, mm -hmm. and then internally you just feel like nobody's connecting with you. You just feel like you're the only one that understands who you are, mm -hmm. and there's just no connection with anybody, and you feel there's like a despair that you feel because you are, you know alone mm -hmm. so it's a state of mind whereby you are just in solitude and mm -hmm. it's it's displeasing it's not like it's not like it's a warranted solitude or one that you enjoy mm -hmm. but you don't like it so people love their space they yes. love being there. <laughs> but, but if you now say that i'm lonely it means you don't like it mm -hmm. so 
Yes, it's a state of mind, psychological thing. Yes. But I think we're going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, and do with it. Too. Yes, very true. So just like we've said, like loneliness is a state of you know being alone and feeling alone. Mm. And um, I feel that there are different stages in which people find themselves, and then they realize they're lonely. Mm. Like they they feel lonely at different stages in life. Um, I'll give an example of myself. <laughs> like there was a point in my life where. I okay, I actually went to school. I went to school and it was a totally new environment for me, a new place. I didn't know people there. So I, was, I felt I literally felt alone. And at that point, I was trying to, you know, watch movies. <laughs> Cuz I was feeling I, I really I think I'd never been away from family like mm-hmm. everybody I knew like that before. And then I was just there by myself and I'm like, "Oh my god, I'm I'm by myself. I'm all by myself here." And there was just that loneliness inside and I was like, "Okay, so I was not even trying to, you know, watch movies to maybe catch up and mm-hmm. make try and feel like, okay, maybe I'll feel better, but it, the movies didn't help. It rather made it worse." Mm-hmm. So, but I guess as we go on, we'll talk about um about ways in which we can, you know, combat the yes, yeah. we can get out of it. So, like I said, now part of the stages could be maybe when you move to a new location or you find yourself in a new environment where you don't know people like that or, yes, where you don't know people. So, mm-hmm. what other stages do you guys think, you know, people mm-hmm. can find themselves and be lonely? Yes, another stage is uh, when maybe like everyone around you seems to be getting married and mm-hmm. just, you know, there's this desire that God has placed in, in you know in our hearts to you know to have somebody. Even Bible noticed the Bible spoke about Adam. Mm-hmm. He was alone. God saw that there was a void that he had and he needed to be filled with mm-hmm. somebody. So mm-hmm. I mean it's not it's not a sin and it's not out of the ordinary for you to feel that way. So once one stage in a person's life is when he's he or she is single and maybe like desiring to have a partner, a life partner, and that is a stage where a person can also find <laughs> themselves lonely. I also have an example, a personal example too. When I was in school, I was like final year, and for some reason, all my friends just having somebody, they're just pairing up the two, so I'm like, what's happening to me? And and then one of, one of those days, I was just alone in the room, and you know, why is it not to be lonely? Because mm-hmm. I was not alone, I was idle, we still get into that. Mm-hmm. I was idle, and Thoughts started coming mm. and feelings started coming. <laughs> so there was this person that God had already told me that I was a no no. Like <laughs> I heard God, I even had peace. Like mm. God is no one. God, I know you gave me the best person. So mm. I knew it was a no no, but I thought I have this thought that maybe it was no for that time. Maybe God has changed his mind. You know how it's good to know what God is saying now and yeah. stuff. So maybe God has changed his mind. Like and the person is now, you know, with advanced, like that's like maybe after three years, like maybe it's now a year. Maybe God wanted me to face my studies then and I'm almost done with so I just started calculating <laughs> So I picked up my phone and I started chatting with him. Wow. And he was he was available, he was still good. Wow. So I started chatting back and forth and then feelings are just grow. And wow. I now like I had to speak to my mentor about it mm-hmm. and he, he told me that you know what, this is not it. I'm on the wrong path and he mm-hmm. counted me and I, I knew he was right so anyways to reverse i'm talking about loneliness yes yeah. singleness can bring loneliness being single can you know it's, it's actually not out of the ordinary to feel lonely when you're single so that's a stage in a person's life too mm-hmm. yes. where you can feel lonely sure. yes and then another stage in one's life that you can feel lonely is uh, probably in the state of um you are in a critical decision whereby you are made to take a stand mm-hmm. like in a compromising decision let's say you are in the midst of people that have chosen a particular way that you know is wrong and because you're a believer and you mm-hmm. are morally upright you don't want to go you know through that path rather you want to stand for what you know is right you can feel only at that point especially when everyone mm-hmm. else is going the opposite direction i have a story to tell that one it's actually mommy's story <laughs> <laughs> She shares it a lot. You know, she talks about how um, when she was in secondary school, how, how she had just one friend. <laughs> she even had a friend, so she wasn't like really me. But actually, she gave she as she shares she shares a lot, and it actually encourages me, and you know, gives me the hope, and even and even, even channels my own story when I was in secondary school as well. Mm. So she shared the story of how um, a lot of her um, classmates all agreed to tell a lie against a particular lecturer. Mm. Everyone agreed that this lecturer is leaving the school, except my mom and her best friend. Wow. So, yes. Hey, yes. <laughs> so the principal was calling, you know, the students in one by one to say the truth, what exactly happened. So they were all saying the same thing, which was a lie. And now called my mom in. Then she now she said the truth. 
They now called the next person, which, who, who was our friend. A <laughs> friend now said the truth as well. They were now confused that what was going on. So, to the point that principal had to say that because she was the senior prefect of the school, that mm. okay, that they needed to tell the truth, and she stood for that truth. Meanwhile, before everything got cleared up, she was persecuted with her friend because she was the only one standing for the <laughs> truth. But when everything was cleared up, she and her friend end up being like heroes, mm. like heroines. Mm-hmm. Sorry. They ended up, you know, they ended up giving glory to God. You know, they weren't they weren't put to shame and they were so proud to have taken the stand that mm-hmm. they did. So it's we we'll soon we we'll soon get to solutions yeah. and you know solutions of loneliness and all. So I'm just in at another stage of um, loneliness that you can feel is when you are being pressured to compromise your stand. Mm, yes, very, very true. So, like we have mentioned, there are different stages in which people can find themselves and find that they are lonely. But that doesn't necessarily mean it is wrong. It is what you now do at the point where you're feeling lonely that determines if <laughs> you're going the right way or the wrong way, or and then how long the loneliness extends for. So, I believe there are certain things that people do that that is not the right approach towards loneliness. So, I think we should talk a little bit on that, like. Mm-hmm. What are the things people would do? Like, for example, I gave my own story. I was watching movies. <laughs> I was trying to, you know, sink my loneliness in movies. And maybe if I watch movies, I would, you know, feel better. But it just, it just, I just kept, you know, this, it felt like I was just drowning in it. Mm. I just felt, is there anyone like more lonely? <laughs> I felt more lonely rather than, you know, feeling better. I was thinking that watching those movies would help me, you know, feel better and get to a better state. And the truth is, I even had work to do. I had assignments, I had projects, <laughs> but I didn't feel like doing any of it. I just, I would look at it and be like, I don't feel like doing it. Like I was just feeling alone. I was feeling down, I was feeling sad. And then I was like, okay, let me watch movies. It would help me, but it didn't help. It made it worse. Like I watched movies to the point I'm like, ah, ah, wow, like I got tired. <laughs> Of watching the movie so those are some of the ways people try and find solace in the wrong things yeah. by doing the wrong things and you know searching in the wrong places and that can just make you go deeper into that lonely feeling it can just make you you can just continue drowning in it and it gets worse rather than getting better so um let me just allow you guys to say something on that as well yes well another aside from watching movies and while in the wait time another um thing that people get themselves into that is not a solution to loneliness is actually them being idle. And it's funny because idleness is not something you get into. It's just you just find yourself mm-hmm. <laughs> with nothing, mm-hmm. and then you allow yourself to remain in that posture mm-hmm. of idleness, which is very dangerous because you know, as the saying goes, that an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Because it's in the state of you being idle that the devil can bring in things that yes. are not exactly godly. Because the truth is, your flesh is going to be hinting things at you, and your flesh obviously does not want god's will does mm-hmm. has no interest in things of god mm-hmm. so that's the point where your flesh will start hinting things that are you know hinting solutions and um what's the word like alternatives my, like my like, exactly <laughs> <laughs> like exactly, exactly. Yeah. your flesh is your flesh that will be hinting things at you when you're idle but mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. when you okay for example now um people have i've heard a lot of people's you know testing moods and a lot of personal ones as, as well that it's in a state of idleness that your mind goes to things like a masturbation, mm-hmm. pornography, which is so terrible. The funny thing is that if you are busy, you, w- you wouldn't even think about that. If you had, mm-hmm. if you had been working on projects, or your mind would have been so you. <laughs> with you wouldn't even have time. So idleness is something that you must not allow yourself to wallow into. Mm-hmm. And it's not something you literally do. It's, you have to engage yourself quickly before mm-hmm. you realize that, okay, and you can actually stop yourself from being idle when you realize that uh, thoughts are coming to your mind that are not exactly from God and mm-hmm. you're just sitting down and you have nothing to do. Mm-hmm. Beware of such postures because idleness is creeping in. Mm-hmm. Yes, true. Yeah. Another thing you shouldn't do when you find yourself lonely is to compromise. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because for, if you know, like that I said earlier, if what made you lonely in the first instance or mm. the fact that you, tr- you stood your ground yes. in christ in the word of god and now you are now contemplating mm. you know, the devil will bring those thoughts like maybe if i just mm-hmm. give in mm-hmm. and just you know blend in and mm-hmm. just choose to be like every other person yes. i will not be lonely after all so at that moment you just receive strength from god's word just be strengthened and make sure you don't compromise because you know in the end 
God, you know, you don't know who God is just, you know, using the opportunity to test you or to even yes. preach yeah. to somebody else. Because you know, the, the irony is that when you stand your ground, the yes. people who are falling <laughs> will look at you like, oh, I wish, yes. I wish, I wish I had. Mm-hmm. So you don't know. Who's... And the people that are coming can also look at you. So if that person can take a stand, I, I can can't, also I take can't. a stand. So you don't know who is who is looking at you or looking up to you. And so just be strengthened. Like Job in the Bible, for example, he lost everything. He had every reason to, you know, yeah. curse yeah. God and just give in. Yeah. And in fact, the host of heaven were, were literally like banking on this guy. Like mm-hmm. you have to just. Stand yes. your ground, and he did. Mm-hmm. So in that state of loneliness, just be strengthened. Don't compromise for any reason. Don't allow those thoughts from the devil to make you feel like, you know, you are the only one. I forgive you, and your things will get better. Mm-hmm. It never gets better. Yeah. Just is your solution is really mm-hmm. good. But I got to, I got to come into solution. Come into solution. solution. I think mean, one thing you must not do is you must not compromise. That point you made is very important. Compromise, like as you were talking, I remembered my primary school days, <laughs> and I remember that. Um, I okay. My parents are missionaries, so they were just been they had been transferred to a new country, which I'd never been. And then I was in a new environment, new school, the only Nigerian in school. And I had friends, but I, I remember thinking one day to myself that are these people really my friends? Because even though I had friends, I was I felt alone. Like I felt nobody was on my side. But I'm like, well, I don't want to be alone. I, would, I don't want to be alone in school. I don't want to be the one that says, like, "Why is this girl always walking alone and behaving?" you know doing things alone so even though i knew that i shouldn't be friends with these people not that they were bad but they didn't see me as a friend they didn't treat me like a friend but i kept you know going back to them and they would you know talk to me anyhow and i would still you know follow them around and (laughs) thinking about it now i'm laughing i'm like wow so i would still be there and then i was younger and i was growing but over time I outgrew it and I'm like, no, man, I can't, I can't continue like this. And okay, we're going to go into the solutions because those are part of the things that also help me, you know, get out of that. So yeah, that comprom- compromising does not help because mm-hmm. even though I compromised, I was still, you know, hanging out with them, thinking I was feel, I didn't feel better, I just felt worse. And I was just like, well, let me. And I know there are certain people that have compromised and that's just there. They know that I'm not supposed to be doing this, but they're still doing it. Don't be afraid to stand your ground. Don't be afraid to stand alone, especially if you are standing with God. Don't be afraid to stand alone. God is with you. You are not alone. So anyway, so yeah. yeah. Okay, yes. Another thing we shouldn't do, or people shouldn't do in the state of loneliness is to try to get, you know, pleasure from sinful acts. Yeah. Some people, you know, go clubbing, they go to drink, drink. They, do, they do stuff that... I know the irony of this thing, the Bible talks about, about the fact that alcohol, for example, wine, it just gives temporary pleasure. When you wake up in the morning, you're like, I need another drink, that's True. it. So it's, it's not a lasting solution, solution, solution exactly. Solution. And it's not even a godly one. You don't have mm-hmm. peace, you don't have joy. You just, you just you be full of fear. Your happiness, exactly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You just feel fun. Oh, so that is something you should you should do you shouldn't do. Very, very true. So I think we've talked about things people shouldn't do. There are a lot of other things, but these are just a few we've mentioned. And now I think we should now go to the main, 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 the main, the main, <laughs> which is, you know, things you should do, the solutions, what you should do in times when you feel alone or, yes, when you feel lonely. So what to do? Well, what can we say then? The solution is Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because the truth is, um, if you read through the scriptures, that mm-hmm. same Jesus knew that we're going to feel lonely because yeah. he's leaving us yeah. to a world that is literally opposite of his nature. Mm-hmm. And you know, Jesus came and he brought light to the world and he said to his disciples that he's not leaving them alone, but he's sending the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. to them, to be with them. And he said that he's going to be with us to the end of age. Yes. So um, Jesus is very much aware that we have, we as humans have tendency to feel lonely, especially when you know, we are so consumed with worldly affairs. We have a tendency to feel lonely and mm-hmm. to just not feel connected to things around us. And that is why he said that he is going to be with us mm-hmm. through thick and thin to yes. the very end of age. Once we can develop an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, then we'll just, under, we'll just realize that there is there is no amount of friendship that mm-hmm. you can even have that will be as sweet as the one Jesus offers. Mm-hmm. And I even had that experience when I was in secondary school, um, and I, I, it, it was a new secondary school. 
in SS3. I changed my school very late when I was in SS3. So I was I was a new student. So it's a school I was already familiar with, but I didn't know the faces anymore. I had been to that school just in JS1. So I was a new student and I didn't really know people that well. So I felt lonely, mm. felt alone. But I just decided to start talking to myself. Meanwhile, I know. I, <laughs> In my mind, I was talking to myself, but there was a feeling that I was talking to someone, mm. which is the Holy Spirit. So I just started doing that over and over and over again, and I just realized that this 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 was more than a hobby. Like it, there was mm. there were, like there are feedbacks, and mm. it was beautiful. It was so enjoyable, and truly there were tangible feedbacks. And like like I used to say, how I felt, you know, a tangible mm. hug as well. Mm. So there is such a sweet, intimate. A relationship that Jesus would like to offer every mm-hmm. one of us not just you don't have to wait till you feel lonely True. you can have that now because the truth is he's closer than a brother mm-hmm. he's a friend that is closer than a brother so um, number one solution I think the ultimate one <laughs> is Jesus Jesus <laughs> Jesus so mm-hmm. I just want to really add to what you said from my personal example as well of you know, me trying to use movies. So <laughs> I watch movies to the point where I'm like, okay, like I'm done. <laughs> like I'm done. I felt like I reached the peak of watching movies. And then the thought just, you know, dropped in my mind that how about spending time with Jesus? And I'm like, oh, okay. Like I just, <laughs> I knew inside me that that is what, that was the answer. I just knew that was the answer. And at that moment, I'm like, okay, I went back to God and I was absolutely honest with him. I, I was honest with how I felt, how I was feeling. And I just asked for strength. Because there are times, when you're in those times when you're down and um, lonely, and maybe you've already started wallowing in it, mm-hmm. it takes strength to come out of it. And Jesus, like Dara said, Jesus is there, is available. Oh, Jesus is the reason for the season, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that just dropped in my head. So, I mean, Jesus is the reason for the season, and it's Jesus we're celebrating this season as well. So, okay, back to what I was saying. (laughs) So, yeah, so I, at that point, I determined in my heart that Jesus is my solution. Like, I'm going to hold on to him and nobody else. Like, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else can satisfy but Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I was intentional about cultivating that relationship with him. I, I think it was at that point I literally my relationship with him moved to another phase. It moved to another phase, and from that point on, I have never had that feeling I felt at that point. If I tell you about somebody, I tell you, okay, I know Dara, and she's a powerful woman of God, spitting fire and rema. <laughs> And then I tell you, so you can say you know her because I've told you about her, but that knowing is from hearing from somebody else. But when you spend time with her, you you know, you spend time with her, you talk to her, you have access to her, you go to her every time you have a question, you know her voice, you understand how she, you know, how she thinks, the things, the kind of things she can say, the kind of things she would not say. You you can now say you know, you have, you know, tangibly felt her, you have handled, you know, you've handled the you know the person just like your parents you know them you know more than anybody else would mm-hmm. and that's the kind of relationship jesus wants to have with us as well he wants an intimate relationship with us he wants us to grow from just you know hearing about him reading about him to also experiencing him so as children of god we should you know always aim for more because there's always more in christ jesus so when you have that close and intimate relationship with god I can say that that lonely feeling, it, even if it comes once in a while, it can't last because mm-hmm. Jesus is the answer, it is the solution that you need. So it can't last. So just hold on to Jesus. Develop a relationship with him. Build it. Stick it as your life depends on it. Thank you very much. Bella, <laughs> over to you. Okay, so um, still, about, still about Jesus. You know, when you read the story of Adam in the Bible, the Bible says that God saw that he was alone. And it touched me, like, means that God actually sees our loneliness, sees our, our, our struggles, and he brought a solution. So you just keep loving God and yes. serving God and trusting him. He's always going to do that. He's always, he's our father. He's, mm-hmm. He knows what we need and he will bring that solution. So for me, that's when I also, you know, started misbehaving and I... <laughs> I had brain reset, but then my mentor spoke to me and I saw things in the right light. I understood that my solution was just going back to God and, you know, in place of prayer, I was able to 
open up my heart and explain mm. how I felt and I received strength you know because the thing is God is there's a vacuum in every heart and so when I, I allowed God to fill that vacuum and I just yeah. trusted God that in the right time he's going to bring this person the right person my way it just gave me the strength to move on and to know that the solution is not going to you know hooking up with the wrong person and it's just waiting on God so I decided to trust God so understand that God has God knows what you're feeling, mm-hmm. he knows your pain, he knows your hurt, and he has the answers, he has the solution. Mm-hmm. But many times, he wants us to just first trust him yeah. and love yes. upon him and build that relationship with him. Yes. And in the end, he's always going to answer for us in his own timing, in his own time. So yeah. that's just it. I think another important thing would be the word of God. The word of God is also very important yeah. because, you know, in times when the, when the thoughts come, because, you know, the thought, you can just keep drowning in the feeling and then the devil will be bringing different thoughts. But then if you have the word of God in you, the word of God would, you know, spring up within you and be, you know, be a form of response to prevent you from allowing the thoughts to sink deeper. Because I feel in times when people are lonely, it can also lead to several other feelings where you start feeling you're not worthy, you're not, you know, you're not loved. You can lead to depression. Yes, can lead to depression and, you know, many more things. So I feel having the word of God also helps knowing what, you know, God says about you and, you know, understanding and trusting that God that has said this means it's a, it's a truth. It's 100% truth and right and correct. And whatever other lie or the devil is trying to bring in cannot stand. So having the word of God is also very important. Yeah, and the place of prayer too. Yes. Praying to God for friends. If, for example, maybe mm-hmm. you, are, you feel like you don't have anybody, just you know, pray to God to give you godly friends and yes. He will do that. And if it's about you know compromise, praying to God for strength. Yes. So really, it's still all about God. Yes, it's all about God. God. <laughs> prayer, God's sure. word, and everything. And also, we discovered another thing because you know, that book about idleness. Yes. So, to prevent idleness, it's important to get busy, occupied, yes. but productively because you can be busy. <laughs> like my sister, you're watching movies. <laughs> So yes, it's it's important to get busy. Don't uh, avoid being idle. Avoid being just in that state of not doing anything, not doing Mm -hmm. anything. But just find something productive to do, and you know, just bounce out of that state. And Mm -hmm. just Mm -hmm. and also, if you have a friend you can talk to, if there's someone you can also share with, even if it's not physically on the phone, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. basically can encourage you and you know share with you and pray with you. But make sure you don't remain in that state. Yes. Don't remain in that state. Yes. I pray God to help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And then I also wanted to mention that um, in case you feel you might need counseling, there are a lot of you know godly counselors out there, Christian counselors that you can always reach out to, or you can also you know prayerfully seek the face of God to identify the people you can reach out to to help you through because some people might actually need people to help them through that through whatever phase they are in for example if somebody has you know um, maybe lost somebody somebody has lost somebody they might need somebody a counsel a counselor to help them to see them to help them with therapy and all that so I pray God will help us all in the name of Jesus and he will always show up for us in Jesus name so I think we should pray now Dara, please pray for us. All right. <clears throat> well, before I go into the prayer, I just want to make this call. You know, as we've been talking about the solution to loneliness and mentioning Jesus, 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 mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that there are some people out there that would feel, I don't know, a little out of the box, wondering, okay, is it possible to have this relationship with Jesus? Who is he? Where can I meet him? What's his address? Do you have an address and everything? <laughs> well, um, such people, I want to say that there's a there's a great news for you because mm-hmm. Jesus is everywhere. And as he's everywhere, it means he's with you right now. Mm-hmm. And he's listening to you, he's watching you, he cares about you so much. He actually died for you on the cross so that you will not go through what he went through. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm making this call to you because he would want you into his fold. He, he wants you to have a personal relationship with him. He wants you to be closer to him than you've ever been all your life. He wants, he wants to be the closest person to you. And um, if you are in this category, then just say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this time. I thank you because this time has been ordained for me to meet with you. Thank you, Father, because I know you love me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for saving me from my sins. Thank you for forgiving me of all the trespasses. Father, 
I ask that you write my name in the book of life and you enlist me in your army. Amen. I ask, Father, that you bring me into your fold and you help me to develop a personal relationship with you. Amen. Father, I pray that you give me the grace to always see you in the midst of trials and temptations. Amen. I pray that you give me the strength to always hold on to you no matter what. And Father, I pray that you make this relationship grow from strength to strength and from glory to glory. That all will see that there is a noticeable change in me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So if you said this prayer with me, congratulations. congratulations. I'm so happy for you because you have been enlisted <laughs> and Jesus is waiting for you. He wants to hear from you. <laughs> so make sure you talk to him every day, mm -hmm. anytime, every minute. You can just yes. have, you know, the key is to actually have a, have a praise song in your heart as you're walking. Just be, just be ruminating on the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. And believe me, you just you just start experiencing this overwhelming sense of joy and peace mm -hmm. that will just start coming over you that you wonder where it's coming from it's actually jesus mm -hmm. and you should tell other people about him too mm -hmm. amen so let's all just pray mm -hmm. so. father we thank you for this time thank, thank you for jesus. this topic mm -hmm. father we thank you for the privilege to speak to your children Father, we thank you for the grace that you've given unto us to talk about this topic. <clears throat> we are not speaking as experts, Father, but we know that we are aware that we spoke your mind. Father, we pray that you help every one of us. Amen. Amen. Help us to come out of whichever state of loneliness we found ourselves in. Amen. Father, we pray that you give us the grace to come out of it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we pray that you help us to always see you in situations. Help us never to lose track of you. Yes, help us to always hold on to you no matter what. Amen. Father, help us to always see your doings and always be grateful for what you're doing for Amen. us. Father, we pray that you give us the strength, Amen. Jesus, to always find you in situations. Amen. And you also give us the strength to not compromise. Amen. Give us the strength to not be idle. Amen. Give us the strength, Father, to stand firm on your word. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So that just like Job and Joseph, you shall be proud of us, Amen. Lord. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This was a this was a really lovely session. It was. It was. It was. It was. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. We know and believe that you have been blessed. So Till next time. Till next time. Bye. 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 Compliment of the season. Compliment of the season. Bye. Bye. Happy New Year in advance. See you guys in the new year. Woo!